A weak body cannot sustain high-level martial arts practice for long. And the old karate masters knew this. That's why they developed a whole range of crazy awesome karate strength training tools that you can use to condition the body and improve your martial arts skill level. Today, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite ones right here in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. Keep watching. Hey guys, I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com, AKA the Karate Nerd. And right now, I'm at the Asato Dojo in Okinawa, which is a beautiful space run by my friend James, where people from different nationalities and different styles can come to train and share knowledge together. And of course, all of the traditional strength training tools of old school karate are right here, including the new ones in the back, because there's also a functional gym here. Plus, flagship store of Seishin International, so if you want to get yourself a new gi, plus some cool training, you should definitely come to Asato Dojo. Anyway, let's talk about these cool tools. Now my first and favorite one is the Chi-ishi. And these Chi-ishi come in different shapes, sizes, and even colors in this case. Actually, these ones are pretty cute. Usually they don't have these different colors. There are really big ones like these this giant one, but there are also smaller ones which are great, especially for kids. You can use the small ones with one hand and the big one with both hands. And the purpose of the chi ishi is to develop your whole body, not just your wrist strength. Although that is something you will definitely improve when you start practicing with the chi ishi. In fact, the, the name or the term chi ishi comes from two words. Chi comes from chikara, which means power. And Ishi means stone, because this is stone, right? It's basically a concrete slab on a stick that you use, and due to its off-center weight, it really develops that functional type of strength that will help your martial arts practice. Now let me show you one of my favorite Chi Ishi exercises. All right, I'm gonna go with the pink one, or Momoiro, peach blossom color, because that sounds way cooler. So if you want to practice with the Chi Ishi, there are tons of exercises that you can do depending on what style of karate you practice. The one that I'm going to show you not right now can be used by basically anyone, even beginners. But be careful, you should always start slowly and gradually increase the intensity and the speed. So you start by standing in a sumo stance. It doesn't matter if it's a shikodachi or a kibadachi, depends on your style and your preference. But make sure that your center of gravity is situated low so that you're in a stable position. And now from here, you grab the chi ishi with both hands. First, let me show it without breathing and then I'm gonna show you how to incorporate breathing as well because that's super important. Straight arms. All you do from here is dip the chi ishi back behind you. But pay attention, you don't want to lose your structure, right? You want your pelvis tucked, your abs squeezed, and your shoulders down in this straight neutral spine position. As you then bring the chi ishi back to the front. And that's it. Looks super simple. But the better you get at it, the more difficult it gets. So again, I bring it back in a straight line without losing my structure, okay? Remember to keep your body tight and then bring it right back. Let me show it one more time from this direction. You go back, open up your chest, your thoracic spine, and then bring it forward again. And now let's synchronize that with some breathing. You breathe in through the nose. And now you breathe out. As you exhale, you contract your abs and squeeze your whole body together. And at the same time, you try to actually squeeze the chi ishi as if it's a wet towel, or in the case of Okinawa, a wet belt, because even the belts get sweaty here. Again, you inhale, but don't lose your position. That's why it's so challenging.
and yame. Relax. After each exercise, each set or rep of these strength training tools, try to always relax your wrists, your forearms and your hands, and especially your fingers. Because if you're not used to this type of functional training, it can be really exhausting. Now let's move on with the next tool. All right, so moving on from the chi-ishi, now we have the nigiri game. Nigiri refers to the grip. Some people call them a sanshin game because you're usually used for practicing sanshin gachi, which is a specific type of stance used mostly in the nahate-based styles like gojuru or uechiru. Similar stances are found in many different styles, including modern karate styles like Shitoryu and Shotokan, for example, like the Hangetsu Dachi. Now, this is basically just a jar that you can fill with either sand or water. Because the higher you progress, the better you get, the heavier it gets. So you can gradually progress and get stronger and stronger. Because you don't want to reach a plateau where you have to find other tools to use. You can always go heavier with these different types of old school Okinawan weight training tools. Just like with the Chiishi, it comes in different weights, right? Here you just fill it with more and more sand or water to make it heavier. And then the secret lies in the grip. Because the thumb should not go like that, which is what a beginner would usually do, right? You want the thumb to kind of go this way. Can you see how I fold it in that way? Because that's the practical way you would use your tiger claw or your eagle's claw technique if you want to be able to use these same types of fist formations for fighting. So, you grip it this way, remember the thumb over there, and then usually you would actually have two of these, one in each hand. And you can actually have one in each hand of the chi as well, especially if you go lighter. So I'm gonna grab this one over here as well. Remember the thumb that way, and now, let me show you how to use them. After you grab them, one in each hand, assume the sanchin dachi position, or whatever you call this type of stance in your style. Let me just show you a couple of keys here. The toes align with the heel. The front foot externally, sorry, internally rotated, all the way from the hip to the knee to the foot. Make sure you align everything and then squeeze your thighs, your butt, and tuck your pelvis this way. So you're kind of gripping the floor with your toes. And then you grab your nigirigame from here. I start with my nigirigame by my side. I grab as I rotate, just like I'm using my feet to grip the floor, I'm using my hands to grip the nigirigame. Shoulders down. Squeeze your butt, brace your abs, and then step, inhale and exhale as you squeeze your whole body and make it into one big solid unit. And then of course you can turn around or go backwards. I'm going to show you that one too. Back, and back. Forward, step, and forward common mistake that people make here is that they're too hunched over because they're so focused on their pelvic tilt but you should not be hunched over up here see if you can have your shoulders depressed and a neutral spine although you twist or tilt your pelvis at the same time plus the stance if it's too wide here then somebody could easily just kick you in the groin so see if you can have a bit narrower stance Usually with us Westerners, it's pretty difficult to have a narrow stance because we like to have wide stances, right? But see if you can have a little tighter stance as you grip the nigirigame and then you walk. Now this is the very basic exercise that you will start with if you learn the nigirigame. And man, that really kills your grip strength. But later on, when you get more advanced, you can actually start swinging these jars as well. But I'm not gonna do it in here. And pay attention, if you're sweaty in your fingertips, you might actually drop them. So it's good to have mats when you're practicing with the sanshin jars or the nigiri jars. All right, let's move on. Next up, we got the makiyage kigu. And this is something that basically anyone can easily make at home. Because it's just a stick with a rope. 
that could actually be a karate belt. And then that's tied to some kind of weight. These are just basic weight plates. But in the old days, it would be a stone or something like that. And now we practiced some wrist stability, some full body strength. We did some gripping strength, but this time it's time for some mobility instead, plus forearm strength. Because now you should have straight arms, perfectly straight. And then from here, you slowly lower the weight by twisting the stick. Can you see how the stick is twisting as the weight goes down? Straight arms, and then once it reaches its bottom position, you switch and you go up. One, two, three, four. And the more tired you get, the more you wanna kind of bend your arms, which is a natural thing, right? Because this will always be stronger than this because you're closer to your center and you can activate all of your muscles in the body. But basically we wanna just isolate the arms for this exercise. So even though you might wanna do this as an instinct, see if you can have straight arms. As you then pull it up, you rotate, and then you go down again. And just focus on this movement here and here. You go up and down, up and down continuously. You start slowly, once it touches the floor, you go back up, and then you can go ah, faster, 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 ah. and that's it. And these were actually light weights. You could go even heavier, like with this one. Depends on what kind of weights you have available, but you could essentially make your own easily at home. Now, Last but not least, let me show you not exactly a strength training tool, but more of a conditioning tool. This one. This is for kitae. Kitae means conditioning. And in this case, I'm gonna condition my arms, my bones, my blocks, but even my legs, the shin bone. Now, this is something you would usually see people who do full contact karate styles use, like uechiru or kyokushin. By the way, this was actually handed down by Mr. Uechi himself, of the Uechi Ryu style. So, this is a kitae bo. Kitae is conditioning, right? You can do ude kitae, which is the arm. Kote kitae is around the wrist. Or ashi kitae, around the leg or the shin. A basic way to start with this, oh, by the way, this is just actually rope around a stick. That's all it is. It's not more than that. And this rope is the same as what you would have in an old school striking post called a maki wara. So this rope is actually called a wara. Basic exercise. Start by rolling it on your forearms this way. You can gradually add more weight by just shifting your body over the arms that way. And then you spin them Twist your arms as you roll it. And then gradually move back to put more weight over your legs when it starts hurting too much. The point is that it should be uncomfortable, but it should not hurt too much. And once you've prepared your arms, you can do the same with the leg, but then you should start hitting because that's what it's mainly used for. Inside, outside. You don't need to squeeze your hand, you can just be, stay relaxed. That's actually a good psychological training too, to be relaxed even though you're experiencing some discomfort or pain. That carries over well to fighting. Other side. Now the point of conditioning your body is to make it strong and anti-fragile because Fragility means that something breaks down. It can't resist any outside force, right? And then stability is something that can resist outside force, but it doesn't improve from it. Anti-fragility, that's your body. Because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's the kind of principle that we wanna apply or exploit when we're conditioning the body. Whether it's punching a makiwara, a striking post, or using one of these tools. Some karate instructors even punch real rocks and stones with their hands. But I'm not at that level yet. And that's it.
some of my favorite strength and conditioning tools from Okinawa. Some of them you can do on your own, others you will probably have to buy or see if you can have a friend make one for you. Because it's easier than you think to make these tools. I've made many of them myself. Leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Is this something you would incorporate in your training? If not, maybe you can just go to a regular gym and do some other strength training, but make sure that it's functional, right? You wanna make sure that your strength can actually carry over to your karate techniques. So skip the machines, all right? That's it for today. Train hard, good luck, have fun, and greetings from Okinawa, birthplace of karate.